Hello everyone and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics and much much more. My name is Sava and today we are continuing our discussion of stock return modeling using various insights from statistics and probability theory. And our today's topic is going to be a tricky one, that is the Johnson's SU distribution that has been developed in the 60s and 70s and uh, has been used in asset management to proxy portfolio return distributions ever since quite extensively. And uh, even if you look at the mathematics of it, that is on the cumulative distribution function and the probability density function for the Johnson's SU distribution, you can feel quite overwhelmed. First of all, it uses four instead of one or two parameters that is typical of other simpler distributions, but it also combines some layers of mathematical logic that we have discussed previously. First of all, as many of the advanced distributions, for example, the error distribution or the generalized normal distribution, uh, the Johnson's SU distribution utilizes some insights that has been developed in the normal distribution. Uh, that is, it applies the similar cumulative normal distribution function. Here it is notated as capital F for brevity, but it tweaks it slightly, tweaks the logic of the normal distribution and modifies the argument. Instead of scaled X, that is X minus something divided by something, which is typical for normal distribution, for the hypersecond distribution, and for many, many others, the Johnson's SU distribution function also applies the scaled hyperbolic arc sine function to scaled x so that it can capture some of the other patterns of return distribution that are impossible to model using the simple normal distribution. The derivative of the cumulative distribution function would be the probability density function and we will rely on it quite extensively when estimating all those four parameters for the Johnson's SU function. As you probably have already guessed, it's pretty hard to apply the method of moments for Johnson's SU as you have to solve a system of uh, four equations with four unknowns as there are four parameters. So probably it's best just to opt for the maximum likelihood estimation straight away. So for that, we would need to figure out the values of those four parameters that would maximize the sum of logarithms of the probability density functions for all our observed axes. And uh, the logic of this derivative is quite simple. We can see some parallels with the normal distribution, that is the exponent over here, the uh, factor in front of the ratio, but here the square root of 1 plus squared scaled x goes straight out of the arc sine function, and uh, this goes straight out of the hyperbolic arc sine function. So basically one can relatively easily differentiate this function, so keeping that in mind, the maximum likelihood estimation seems relatively straightforward to implement. So let's do that. First of all, let's start with the default uh, values for our location and scale parameters. So gamma and, uh, gamma and uh, xi can be any real number at all. So let's start with zero there. While delta and lambda, the scale parameters, they can be any positive real numbers. So the default values for those would be just ones. Now, let's figure out the natural logarithm of the probability density function. Let's figure out our log likelihood and let's maximize it using Excel solver to figure out the optimal values for those four parameters. So over here, when we have the probability density function for Johnson's SU, let's just type in equals, first of all, natural logarithm as we are concerned with log likelihood, then let's just look at this formula over here and uh, translate it into the language of Excel. So first of all, we need our delta in the numerator. So 
input delta and lock the row as we don't want it to change from estimation to estimation. Then in the denominator, we need to include lambda and again, lock the row for lambda multiplied by the square root of two pi and close the parenthesis of the square root, close the parenthesis for the denominator and multiplied by another ratio. In this ratio for the numerator, we'll have the exponent of minus a half times the bracket that is basically the argument of the standard normal distribution for the cumulative distribution function of Johnson's SU but squared. So gamma, and here we need to lock the row again, plus delta, lock the row again, times the arc hyperbolic sine function. And here as the argument, we need to input our scaled x using xi and lambda. So x would be just the rank return from over here. So cell E3 minus the location parameter xi. And we log the row here as well. Close the brackets for the numerator divided by lambda. Close the brackets for the argument of the hyperbolic arc sine function. Close the brackets for the argument of the cumulative normal distribution function here. Square it and close the brackets for the exponent function. Then we've got just the denominator left. So just divide it by the square root of one plus, And here we need to input the scaled x again. Open brackets, open brackets once again. X, we well, already know it's just E3 minus Xi and lock the row divided by lambda lock the row squared. And we we'll close the bracket for the square root. We we'll close the bracket for the whole uh, logarithm and we can enforce the formula over here. And we get minus 0 0.9206. Then for the cumulative distribution function for the Johnson's SU, it's going to be a little bit easier. First of all, we need to remember that this capital F over here stands just for the standard cumulative normal distribution function. So we just need to input equals norm as dist. And uh, the Z stat is just going to be this gamma plus delta hyperbolic arc sign expression. So we need to input gamma plus delta times the hyperbolic arc sine of x, again E3, minus xi divided by lambda. And we close the bracket for the hyperbolic arc sine function, put a comma and specify that we need the cumulative normal distribution function, which in our case would be the slightly tweaked argument for the normal distribution function that would give us the Johnson's SU CDF and close the bracket for the distribution function and press enter. And now we can just select those two and bottom right click them all the way down. And for the log likelihood, we just need to sum through all of the logarithms, all of the natural logarithms of the probability density functions. So sum of whole array. And uh, this is just the supremum that uh, determines the degree of fit. Um, unsurprisingly, as we just got those default values of the parameters out of thin air, this fit is terrible, 48%. Well, let's see what this fit would be like as we apply the maximum likelihood procedure. To do that, we need to apply the Excel solver function. So we go to data folder, uh, click solver and state that we need to maximize our log likelihood by changing the distribution parameters. So gamma, Xi, Delta and Lambda. And uh, we can have our gamma and Xi, our location parameters as negatives, as any real numbers pretty much. So we can untick this condition, 
but we need to add the condition that our delta and lambda should be positive. So as here, only the greater than or equal condition is available, let's just require them to be greater than some very small positive number. And that would be enough for our estimation to proceed. And as we click solve, we can see that the solver has computed the optimal values of our distribution parameters, and uh, we've got a pretty decent fit as judged by the supremum of 2.54%. That's quite a bit higher than most of the distributions we have encountered so far. And even if we look at it graphically using the plot, we can see that the gray line, which is the Johnson's SU cumulative distribution function, it actually mimics the blue line, the empirical cumulative distribution function, surprisingly well. So what do we have here? The Johnson's SU cumulative distribution function is a sophisticated and a tricky to estimate, yet really useful distribution when you are dealing with uh, portfolio returns or stock market returns in a practitioner-oriented framework. It has decent fit and it can be relatively easily estimated using maximum likelihood, but the number of parameters and the complicatedness of the mathematical functions that you have to deal with to estimate this distribution is much higher than in many other instances. And that's all there is for the Johnson's SU distribution and its applications to stock return modeling. Please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, please leave any suggestions for further videos on business, economics or finance you would like me to record. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much and stay tuned.